one of the um, most important things for a D is to feel significant to people. If they're forgotten, if someone or something else is chosen over them, that really gets in there. And so I think he's already detached himself. She already knows there's something going on. She's suspecting an affair while she's been gone. I don't know if she suspected it before, but now it's like, I'm not important to you. And if you take their side, you're just as evil as they are. Mm -hmm. So for a D, her husband should defend her and the children. That's how she sees it. And I agree. But I also see how she's being overly dramatic. Well, defend her to, to a degree. I mean, if he doesn't feel she's right at what she's saying, I, and wouldn't, mom, I wouldn't defend her. That and is his mom. You know, so he knows her better than his wife. And so if he truly believes his mom didn't mean to, yeah. you know, it could have been something as simple as she grabbed some nuts and Celeste yeah. really wanted them and either she forgot or maybe she thought Shannon was being dramatic and she didn't have an allergy. Right, right. So it was bad. And from that point on, Chris referred to the incident as Nutgate. <laughs> Nutgate, that's that's. So the picture I'm getting is that Chris didn't take up for his wife or kids. I do think his parents had spoiled him rotten, but I don't think he handled confrontation well at all. Mm -hmm. And so he also blamed Shannon for creating a wedge between him and his parents early on. So Thank that's you. probably why they thought he was, she was taking him away from them. So right. there was, there is definitely some stuff. And, but I can tell you also as a D, if I had a mother-in-law that kept giving my kid something that he was allergic to, it would be on. I could handle one time, yeah, maybe even twice. You do it again and we're going to have a fight. The yeah. one time I got in a fight with my mother-in-law was something to do with Kent. Right. So I can see that side too. So anyway, um, you know, Shannon's obviously sensing he's not missing her. So he shows up, right? So he gives a love letter to his girlfriend. He shows up to the family vacay. And the first night she's hoping they could be intimate. Well, he decided to do push-ups instead. Oh, so he's oh, yeah. all up. And mm. mm -hmm. surely she knows by then something. Oh, she can tell. Yeah. So things are escalating quickly. By August 7th, Chris let her know he didn't want the other baby. By when? August 7th. Yep. So he was cold during the ultrasound appointment. She even grabbed his hand, but he didn't grab it back. Things were so bad, she canceled the gender reveal party. So all of this was very confusing to her. Um, things seemed to be turning around, and he was playing the part, and... They were so intimate. She thought they were in love when she left, but now things aren't good and she can tell they're not good and she's confused. So what Shannon didn't know is all this time, Chris had been dating this girl. You might've been in love with her. Yep. Mm -hmm. So things were bad. And in fact, um, she texted her friend and uh, about how, when he got there, how he was acting. And he, she said, did he say that he loves you? No. He asked me if the kids could see his parents. And I said, no, I'm standing my ground. They haven't made contact in four weeks. No show to her party, nothing. And then her friend said, it's shocking that he hasn't said a word to you about what you said to them. I'm sorry. And then she's like, well, he just needs to open up. So then later on August 7th, Shannon told her friend, Chris told me last night he's scared to death about this third baby and he's happy with just Bella and Celeste and doesn't want another baby. So the friend said he's just scared. Everything will be fine. Or she said fun, but I think fine once the baby comes. She said he has changed. I don't know who he is. What do you mean? He hasn't touched me all week, kissed me, talked to me, except for when I'm trying to figure out what is wrong. And so her friend's like, what? That doesn't sound like Chris. Did he go to the appointment? Yes, cold. Addie, I have no idea what happened. Go through his phone, make sure there's not some bee I have to kill. This is total left field. Why no to counseling totally is out of left field. He said he's not sitting on no damn couch saying what he just said to me to no stranger. 
Oh, Jesus, is what her friend said. So um, then, you know, talks about he rejected sex the night we arrived here. I mean, she's definitely seeing something is, is up, okay? So um, Shannon had prepared a speech for Chris that she was going to give him when she got home from another trip. So they had gotten home at this point from the vacation, and she had to go on a business trip probably with Thrive. And uh, she was going to get home August 13th and read him this letter, okay? And she was determined to get to the bottom of things. And she was going to hopefully save her marriage. But she was probably at the point where if we don't get this settled, I'm out of here. There's only so much a person can take. Yeah. She had no idea that Chris had planned on killing his family hours before. So... At first, he said it was a spontaneous act of rage after they got into an argument. I think it's BS, and we'll get into that. But the neighbor's surveillance camera shows that Shannon arrived at home August 13th at 1.48 a.m. Chris said that he was sleeping when she came home and that he initiated sex, and then they went to bed. He states that they got into an argument later that morning when he got up for work. Uh, he said his wife accused him of cheating and he snapped, strangling her to death. He then said that the noise woke up Bella and she came into the room and saw mommy dead. She asked what was wrong. She then watched Chris wrap his dead body's wife in a sheet and drag it to the truck. And the neighbor surveillance camera shows Watts loading his work truck up and leading at 527 a.m. At 5 or at 1227 p.m., the Watts realtor texts the couple about selling their home. So it looks like they were, they were going to sell it. And it makes me wonder, um, this was a letter she was preparing to uh, talk with uh, Chris. But it makes me wonder, why were they selling the home? Was it financial problems again? So this is Chris's truck over here in the top left from the neighbor. Uh, and you can see him loading it up. And the neighbor said he never, he thought it was weird because he never went there. Right. And I'm, okay, here's a realtor. So this is a realtor. And she says, is Shannon okay? She hasn't weighed in all day. <laughs> so Chris said she hasn't been around all day. It's very odd. And she said, well, that's really weird. You must be worried. Have you checked with her friends or called or reported her missing? He said, I've done it all. Police are handling it now. Um, very and, nonchalant. Yeah, send prayers, please. And then she says, OMG, I'm sorry, lots of prayers. Okay. <laughs> so by 140, her friend Nicole reports her missing, not Chris. Right. Her friend, because she can't get a hold of her. So she goes to their home, her car's in the garage, but no one answers the door. So Chris said that his wife said Shanann was going to take the girls to a friend's house, but he didn't say which friend. Whatever. I no. know. I, I never say, hey, I'm going to a friend's house. I no. always say who I'm going to. Right. Everybody does, I think. Mm -hmm. And so when they looked at surveillance, it was apparent that she didn't go anywhere. So I want you to watch this video. We're not going to watch the whole thing. But. Okay. Let me start the screen share. This is the checkers game where grandson and granddad. Oh, good grief. I always forget to this skip the, the ad. The new okay, so they're going into the neighbor's house. This is the body cam footage. He's texting the whole time. What's that? It's nervous though. Starts pacing and looking around. The cops there, and he won't look. He's getting nervous when he sees that. <laughs> is this on continually? Yep. Recording. Yep. Well, it's not. Is it motion? Or is it okay? okay. So just, just real quick, I bet he was freaking out. Yeah. He probably forgot about the surveillance. Right. Mm -hmm. he was
He's not, he just. Now he's looking. Oh boy. Wonder who he was texting. I was wondering if it's a girlfriend. See, look how nervous he look is. Look at him. Look at him. He's freaking out. Yeah. Yeah, I wonder who he was texting. So they just keep watching him loading up the truck. So he's basically loading up his dead wife. Look how nervous he is. <sighs> he's looking at the cop like... Um, Licking his lips. All right, detective just showed up. Um, he'll probably want to talk to you. He probably, like I said, he might have you call his bank and see if there's any kind of activity. Um, is it there? His friend was more engaged in the yeah. video than he was. Look, he's loading something. <laughs> Even with that tree there? Mm-hmm. I didn't hear that. So he, he definitely looks nervous. Right. So he's like, I pick up everything that goes by. Oh my gosh, did you see that baby in the time thing? Yeah. Look how nervous he is. And his face looks pale. He definitely looks nervous. Okay, so watch this. So the cop is gonna send him out. Right. And then the neighbor's funny. Yeah. He's still just like standing around. That was the start of the video. And then he's like, he's even sweating. Yeah. Okay, now watch this. You just want to go talk to him. I'm going to get his info real quick. He's telling me he's acting weird. Yeah. But I think the cop knew because he sent him out and talked to him. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And then later he told him, he said he never loads up his truck before he goes to work ever. So that, that neighbor's like, uh-uh. Yeah. He's too fidgety. Things are weird. You know, something's going on here. Okay. He wasn't acting normal. Um, Chris is never fidgety. So the next day he was interviewed on um, uh, Denver uh, station number seven. And what do you think about this? I switched from State Farm because of this site. Dang it. They had me paying $163 a month for my name. Okay. So I want to. Right now is. Hopefully they can pick something up for it. Or something. Yeah, she, like, she came home from the airport at 2 a.m. I left around 5.15. She was still here. And like about 12.10 in that afternoon, her friend Nicole showed up at the door. I got had texted Shanae a few times that day, called her, say, you know. But she never got back to me, but she was going to get back to any of her people as well. 
and that's what really concerned a lot of people is like she's not getting back to her but like I mean, she wasn't she wasn't here the kids weren't here no, nobody was here yeah, SHJ and Anna and Bella and Celeste then did you see that face? Mm -hmm. Where he had the slow eye closed. That that to me is a stress marker. Celeste is three. So after I called her and texted her once, and I, I mean, right now I don't even want to just like throw anything out there. Like I hope that she's somewhere safe right now and with the kids. But I mean, could she have been, could she have just taken off? I don't know. But if somebody has her and they're not safe, like I want them back now. Like that, that, that's what's in my head. Like if they're safe right now, they're going to come back. But if they're not safe right now, that's what, that's the not knowing part. Like if they're not safe, I, I, yeah. every light in the house on, I was hoping that I would just get, just ran over by the kids running in the door, just like barrel rushing me, but it didn't happen. And it was just a traumatic night trying to be here. Can I ask you guys any questions about the relationship with kids? Yeah, I, I mean, yeah, I'm like, yeah, I'm in, I'm, 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 it was tearing me apart last night. And I'm, okay, did y'all see that, guys? When he almost laughed? Yes. Yeah. So he's stumbling over his words, yeah. and that's a sign. So he wasn't stumbling at all. Then they start asking him questions and he starts stumbling and then he smiled. Yeah. And then tried to cover it. Right. Uh, I needed that last night. And for that, nobody to be here last night and to go into their rooms and not and know that I wasn't going to turn the rain machines on. I know that I wasn't going to turn the monitor on. No, I wasn't going to kiss them to bed tonight. It was, it, it was, I, I, that's why last night it was horrible. I couldn't do it. Do you see he's still freaking smiling, man? And on top of that, it's all about him. I, I, I. Right. And he, he only mentioned other people were concerned when he was saying that she didn't answer. He didn't say he was. Right. He said she didn't respond and other people were concerned and worried. And Wherever they're at, come on. What I want. Yeah. Yeah. To get home like 11, to go home at like 148. And then the t shirt. A lot of people, so they don't laugh or anything or cry, they put their lip in. Yep. And it's, 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 there's a lot going on around here. And I drive around, you will know what to look for. Right now, this is what they're doing right now is with the canine in the sense. I think this is the biggest thing. This is the biggest thing they've done so far because yesterday they did all the police department did all the searching of the house and trying to gather it being positive. What did um, you members did they see anything? No, like we've we've uh, I'm trying to find a certain section where it talks about a shirt. Here it is. Shanann, Bella, Celeste, if you're out there, just, just, just come back. Like, if somebody has her, just please bring her back. I need to see everybody. I need to see everybody again. This house is not complete with, without anybody here. Please bring her back. And then he's pursing his lips. Okay. The house isn't the same. Right. I not need everybody everything. back. But hold on. So right after that interview, he comments on his T-shirt and his whole demeanor changed. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah. So the lip pursing, licking lips, uh, usually when people purse their lips or holding back stuff, him licking them is definitely he's stressed. The closed body language, he's like hugging himself, definitely protected. But the laughing and then he's like, I really need them back. The house isn't the same. I really yeah. need you. If you're out to come back, I mean, you're shaking your head. No, he doesn't want them back. So that interview is what got detectives on him. 
they, they were a little anywhere, I think. Well, but. not quite. Um, but once they saw that, they knew for sure. And I remember when I saw it real time, you know, on TV, when he laughed, I told Mike, he did it. How much you want to bet in a few days, they're going to break them down. And he did it. Yeah. So after that interview, they wanted to talk to Chris on August 15th, he was interviewed. He denied having anything to do with his family's disappearance. He agreed to a lie detector test and failed. The police also found out that he had a mistress. So they decided, and I'm not quite sure what got them on this, but they decided to do a search of the oil and gas site where they believe the bodies were located at 4.15 p.m. They Wasn't it because of his phone, where his phone was? Probably. Was I think yeah. it was where his phone had last been or something. Yeah. Yeah. That makes sense. They spot a bed sheet matching the pillowcases in the top sheet recovered from a kitchen trash can in the Watts home earlier that day. And they also see what appears to be like a grave site near the oil tanks. He's caught. Um, he knows that he's caught. And this is where his evilness goes even deeper. Uh, now, he confesses to his dad. And I was going to show the video, but we're running out of time. So his, um, his dad comes in. He wants to talk to his dad. So the police kept, you know, we know you did it. We know you did it. He's like, can I talk to my dad first? So his dad comes in and this is where I just get furious. He blames his dead wife, man. Yeah. He's, you know, that he looked on the monitor and he saw his wife killing their babies and he got so angry they killed her. Well, some people when stuff when they do bad things like that, it's embarrassing to them. So they have to blame someone else because their family's gonna know all these people they love and know and think of them. That's embarrassing. That'd be very embarrassing. He was yeah. probably embarrassed. Well, I mean, trying, trying to get out of it. Yeah, trying to get out of it, period. Yeah, yeah. And this is a friend that called the police. But yeah, that he's just. Yeah, his dad knew. He's just a, ugh. Um, so this is where, this is the, where they found the grave of Shanann. And then the two girls were found in the tanks. And uh, so here's, uh, you know, he was charged with murder because he confessed. All they needed was him to say that he killed Shanann. Then they were going to break him down for the rest. They didn't care what story he had. So they charged him on August 15th at 1130 for suspicion of murdering his family. On August 16th, they found Shanann's body in a shallow grave and the two girls in the tanks. On November 6, 2018, Chris Watts pled guilty to all the counts against him to avoid the death penalty. So they, you know, they were going to kill him. So he confessed to killing all three and that Shanann had not killed her own daughters. And he was sentenced on November 19th, 2018 to three consecutive life sentences. The only time he cried, guys, was when it affected him. Right. So this, I, I wanted to show you this picture. Look at the dad, the pain on his face. This, that right there is just heartbreaking. And um, when I saw that, I mean, you can't fake that. His dad, her dad was just beside himself. I mean, did he his lost parents, his entire family. Did his parents go? Yeah, they knew. And no, did they go to the trial? I'm not sure if they were there. Um, I think the trial he had. Uh, he pled guilty. So there's no trial. No, what kind of childhood did oh. he have? I don't know. I couldn't find out much about that, nor could I find out much about his parents. Now, after he got sentenced on February 18th, 2019, he spoke to three investigators at the federal prison and he told them how he did it. So I'm going to try to piece it together and we'll end this episode. Yeah. So, Ooh, the details Chris, of well, you have to hear because you made me research it. Me? Yeah, I told you I didn't want to do it and you thought we needed to. <laughs> so remember that yes I told you I did not want to do this and you're like no I think it needs to be done it was in a text message and I'm like well, oh, I need to, and I just hurt I need really bad. that was the only reason I did it okay so 
Chris said that he strangled Shannon when he became enraged after they argued when he told her that he wanted out of the marriage. So more than likely, she came home to confront him to go through her letter. He said that this happened in the morning when he got up for work, but I don't buy it. I think it was at night, but the exact date of death was undetermined, undetermined because of the condition of the bodies. Right. But the forensic pathologist that conducted the autopsy said that Shannon died shortly after midnight. So it was not long after she got home. It was not close to when he went to work. Right. I think she, I personally think she came home and they either got in an argument and he strangled her or they had sex and then he strangled her. It could be either way. We learned from letters that he wrote from prison that he knew he was going to kill them all hours before he did. Uh, later reports said that he had planned it for weeks. Wow. So did he have sex one last time to keep her from being suspicious or like one last hoorah? I have wow. no idea. But we know that Shannon was very suspicious. He had to, um, uh, to disarm her. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. Make sure everything was okay. Yeah. He then um, strangled her and it takes about two to four minutes. So I'm not sure what horror she felt as she stared at him. Right. Um, Bella was asphyxiated by smothering. The coroner found, found blunt force trauma on her jaw and lacerations and contusions in her mouth. Teeth impressions and superficial bite marks were found on the surface of Bella's tongue, meaning that she fought for her life. They also found what's called tardu spots on her head, which are ruptured capillaries found on victims of asphyxi asphyxiation. Cece was uh, probably smothered as well. She didn't have any struggle or spots. Letters written by him also revealed that he smothered his daughters twice. He said that on the morning of August 13th, he went to Bella's room and then Cece's and used a pillow to kill them. He then returned to bed with Shannon and that's when they started arguing. What? I thought that was interesting. He said he killed the girls first. Oh no, because she'd be around him wherever he went. The wife. He, I think he killed the wife first. He said he he said out of his own mouth. Hold on. The daughters first. Hold on just a second. But he said that he killed her after he woke up from for work, right? Yeah, but she died a little after midnight. Her personality, though, I don't see why that he could kill those kids first without her, her on his trail. I don't know if she would be, he may have just said he's going to tell the girls goodnight. So any, but this is what he said. So I'm just reading what he said, that he killed Bella first, then he killed CC. He returned to bed with Shannon and they started arguing. So he strangled her, but Bella and CC woke up. He said he killed them twice. He thought they were dead and they weren't dead. Oh. Bella's eyes were bruised. And both girls looked like they had been uh, through trauma. Those were his words. Watts wrote, all the weeks of me thinking about killing her and now his face with it, he gave disturbing details about the last moments of his wife while he strangled her. He said that she started to get drowsy and I somehow knew how to squeeze the jugular veins until I cut off the blood flow to her brain and she passed out. I knew if I took my hands off her, she would keep me from Nikki. They asked me why she couldn't fight back. It's because she couldn't fight back. Her eyes filled with blood as she looked at me and she died. I knew she was gone when she relieved herself. Ugh. Watts was surprised when his daughters walked into the room while he was wrapping her body because he thought they were dead. Oh my goodness. He then put her body in his truck, which was captured on the na uh, neighbor's surveillance camera. He wrote, the girls were just kind of running around the house and watching me with scared looks on their faces. Bella started to cry, and when she did, Celeste started whimpering. What a nightmare this was. I realize now the girls getting up and walking around may have been God's third attempt to stop what I was doing. He took his daughters alive with him to the oil field while Shanann's body was laid or was in the back of the truck. Ah, oh, just makes me nauseous. I dumped Shanann on the ground and now walked back to the truck and with the blanket that Celeste was holding, I pulled it over her head and smothered her. In front of her sister. He then dumped his younger daughter's body into one of the oil tankers. While he, uh, all the while, he made his elder daughter watch him kill his sister or her sister. 
I couldn't believe how easily it was to just let her drop through the hole and let her go. Go. I heard her splash as she hit the oil. He came back for his elder daughter and was surprised when she tried to fight back. Little quiet Bella had a will to live. Out of all of the three, Bella is the only one that put out a fight. I will hear her soft little voice for the rest of my life saying, Daddy, no. She knew what I was doing to her. She may not have understood death, but she knew I was killing her. She even asked me, is the same thing going to happen to me that happened to Cece? During the interview, the police showed him several family pictures, no emotional response, no tears when he talked about how he killed the girls. The only time there were tears was when they were talking about what was going to happen to him. And right after he explained how he stuffed his daughters into the oil tank, he was offered lunch. And without batting an eye, he said that he'd like some pizza. Well, he didn't, the police said he didn't just drop them in the holes. He One shot. of them was too big. He had to force her and move her body. And there was damage on her body because she wouldn't fit through the hole. She, he forced them in there. What a douche. He should have been, he should have been killed. Death penalty for sure. So this is a video that little Bella, where she called her daddy a hero, days before she was killed. Have to watch the commercial again. Stanley Tucci, searching for Italy, Sundays at nine. New, new video of one of the daughters calling her dad her hero. <laughs> My daddy is a hero. He helps me grow up strong. Sinan Watts Facebook that just days before she was killed. She shared this photo of her husband, Chris, with a proud dad shirt on. Investigators found the two girls' bodies in an oil well not far from where their mom's body was found. Chris Watts is suspected in their deaths, and prosecutors expect to charge him in the coming days. So I posted the full video on um, our Instagram. This is him uh, right before he pled guilty in prison. And uh, his girlfriend gave um, an interview. This picture right here is he's crying about what's about to happen to him. And then this is him in February 18, 2019, when he told the entire story of how he killed his wife and uh, daughters. I wonder what his girlfriend thought about all that. If she knew anything was off. It doesn't sound like she had any idea. And uh, I just, you know, when people like, they're like, well, you know, they feel sorry for him because he was married to Shannon. That infuriates me because he, he his daughters could have let, uh, lived. And yet he killed them twice. Yeah, he made that choice twice. Right. People are ignorant. Yeah. So as far as the type of annihilator he is, I'm not sure. He wasn't religious. Um, what he, were the four again? The uh, self-righteous, the anomic, where they're socially awkward, which he may have had a little bit of that being a C, but not much, it doesn't sound like. Um, the other one's disappointed now that might fit because, you know, he gets married, they have to fight bankruptcy, you know, all that stuff. But the fact that he orders a pizza after confessing to killing his family, the fact that he only cries when it's about him, the fact that he was willing to throw his dead wife under the bus, it's all about him. And I think he was a narcissistic psychopath and uh, shame on him. Shame on him. And the way, you know, daddy, no. How can you keep doing that? You know, I just, anyway, I, I don't, I, he, he's just evil. And hopefully he, you know. He might have been thinking his parents were right too. She's just that way. And he started hating her more and more and more. Because I'm sure he talked to his parents about it. Yeah, but there's other people that hate their wives. And they don't kill them. Right. So right. he definitely fits into the pattern of wanting to erase his past. Mm -hmm. And if he went in there to kill his daughters first, that's exactly what he was doing. 
because he could have killed the mom and they would have never known. Right. So he definitely was a family annihilator in the classic sense. It just is so unbelievable. Do you believe him that he did that first though? Mm -hmm. I just still find it hard to believe that she would not be on his every step all over that house. Well, when you're going through something emotional. My thought, even though the coroner said sometime after 12, why would he say that he, he killed her after he got up from work? So my thought is maybe they had one last thing. She could have slept. He could have went and killed the kids. Went back to bed because he said he went back to bed. Right. That's true. Can argue That's that. true. That's true. Um, we know that he had already decided to kill them when they got there. So she may have been tired from her trip. They may have had an argument and she fell asleep. And then he went and killed the daughters and then went and killed her. It's cool. I think, I think he definitely strangled them first because they that that came out way after where the police are like, wow, this guy's not only a sicko, he's a double sicko. Yeah. And especially when he said, I think maybe God was trying to give me a second chance to not kill him. It's still about him. Right. And the fact that he laughed when he was talking about him, you know what I mean? So anyway, I don't feel sorry for him at all, but no. that one, whew, I'm glad that one's over. Cause when I was watching all this stuff and I was researching, especially how, yeah, they died. It was, I was crying. I was nauseous. I had nightmares. It was not a fun one to do. That's for sure. He'll never get out. They should have given him the death penalty. They could have proved the case, found the bodies. No way. Well, I know Elena has to go, but if y'all want to look, I think the parents were interviewed later. I never watched it because strangely, I'm just irritated with them. Oh, his parents? I'm like, yeah. I don't know why. I just am like, I don't and it may be that fallacy that they're they contributed to this somehow which is not real it's not true but i still don't even want to see them <laughs> so if they have anything of interest you know let me know but all right well we'll figure out when to get together again to do